Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Andrew, and this is an AWS tutorial on setting up Nagios in the cloud. In this tutorial, we'll go over setting up a Nagios server as well as a Nagios client machine for our server machine to monitor. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to launch a couple Ubuntu servers. T2 Micro is going to be fine for this demo, as well as an 8 gigabyte volume. So we'll go ahead and select our number of instances to be 2 and our volume as 8 gigs. And we'll name our server as Nagios for now. Our security group is going to be inbound, outbound, all traffic, and I have created that prior to this tutorial, as well as an SSH key pair for myself. So let's launch our instances. Great, so our servers are now online. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is log into the Nagios server. And we're just going to want to run a bunch of update commands just to make sure our server is all up to date. These commands that I'm going to be copying and pasting in are in my GitHub account as well as the description below. So there's no need to write them down. Great, our server is now up to date and we can remove any packages that need to be removed. And so now we'll install the components needed for Nagios. Nagios requires some swap space, so we'll go ahead and add that now. We'll need to add some directories for our swap space. And we're going to edit our FS tab so that our swap space is enabled on every boot of the server. And we'll set our swappiness to zero. So our Nagio setup is going to need a user and a group to run as. And so we'll create those now. We'll create a user as Nagios and a group as Nagio CMD. And we'll add our user to that group. Now we can download the Nagios tarball. Uh, for this demo, we're going to be using 4.0.8. And we'll go ahead and unpack that. And now we'll go into the uh, Nagios directory. And we'll configure it. And so now, since we've just run make all, we're going to install all of the things that Nagios needs to run. And these are pretty quick. And now we'll add the HTTP configuration file that comes with Nagios and we'll put it in our sites available file for Apache. And now Nagios needs a couple different plugins um, for it to run. So we'll go ahead and download the tarball now. And we'll unpack it. And we'll go into the Nagios plugins directory and we'll configure and make that as well. And now we'll edit the Nagios configuration file. And in this configuration file, basically we're going to create a directory for all of the servers that we're going to monitor through Nagios. And Nagios already has that kind of laid out for us, and we're just going to uncomment that line. And we'll create the servers directory. And now optionally, you can add your email to a different configuration file, and I'm just going to show you that now. So we'll edit this configuration file, and you can see where it says change this to your email address. That's where you'd put your email address for Nagios to uh, alert out to you. We'll enable a couple modules for Apache. 
And we're going to set up an HT access file for Nagios, and we'll just give it a username and password of Nagios admin. And we'll symlink that Nagios configuration file that we put in sites available to sites enabled. And we can go ahead and start Nagios and start Apache as well. And we want to put a symlink um, in our init D folder so that when we reboot our server, Nagios is going to start on every boot. And the last thing we'll do is we're going to create our first server that we're going to monitor in our servers folder. And I've got a nice little handy configuration here for us to copy and paste. And basically all we're going to do is we're going to replace that address um, to the private IP address of the Nagios client server that we're going to be monitoring. So we'll go back to our AWS panel. We're going to copy the private address of our Nagios client. We'll paste that in there and we will reload Nagios. Great, and our Nagios server is now complete. So we can exit out of here and we're going to log into the client machine. So we'll go ahead and grab the client machine's IP address. Go ahead and log in. And just like the Nagios server, we're just going to run a bunch of updates just to make sure the server is up to date. Okay, and we'll remove any packages that we don't need. And now we can install the components that the Nagios client server needs. Now all we need to do is edit a configuration file on our Nagios client machine so that it knows that the Nagios server is allowed to talk to it. So we'll go to the allowed host section of our Nagios client config. And all we're going to do is we're going to add the private IP address of our Nagios server. So go ahead and copy that, paste that in, and we can restart our Nagios client. Great, and it's as simple as that. So we'll go ahead and log out of our client machine. And now we're going to go to the public IP address of our Nagios server, just to show you that Nagios is up and running and monitoring. And so we'll go on to slash Nagios. And remember, we created that HT access file with Nagios admin. So we'll go ahead and log in. And great, we can see that Nagios is up and running. And we can go to our host section. And we can see that we're monitoring our local host and our first client machine. We can see that everything is up and active. So that concludes our tutorial on setting up Nagios in the cloud. In this tutorial, I went over creating a Nagios server as well as a Nagios client machine. And we created a simple ping test for our Nagios server to monitor our client machine. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.